If you are bored and have nothing to do, it's time for a story between me and you. Sit down or lie down or pull up a chair. Inside my head is the story I'll share. Hello. I'm going to tell you a story today about Ricky the dragon and his friend Agatha. And they have decided to go and visit a farm. Now, Ricky lived on the side of a cliff in a cave with his mum, and he flew over the ocean to Agatha's house. Her house was up on a hill. It was a very tall house. And when he got there, he knocked on the door. <coughs> Agatha opened the door. Hello, Ricky, she said. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. I'm very excited about going to the farm. I have my grandson here today. His name is Nick. Nick, she said. Nick came out of the kitchen and in his hands he was carrying a little stuffy. It was a little grey dog, a little furry dog. It was about this big, it wasn't very high, it wasn't very tall. He was a bit shy. He said, hi, hi Ricky, this is Trix. He's my little dog and he comes everywhere with me because I like him to come with me. And he makes me feel happy. Ricky looked down at him and said, Oh my gosh, I love tricks. Can I just feel what he feels like? Can I see what he feels like? He gave him a little stroke. Tricks was very soft. He was a little stuffy. Now, said Agatha, it's time to get going. And Ricky, this time I have a surprise for you. I'm not going to ride on your back. What you don't know, and I haven't shared with you before, is that I'm actually a pilot. I fly old, vintage, antique aeroplanes. That means that they're very, very old. And today when we fly to the farm, I'm going to fly mine. And my aeroplane looks like this. Let me show you a picture so you guys can see. See how it looks like an old plane? And right at the front it has a propeller and just two seats. And those two seats are wide open. There's nothing above them. Out they went. And near her house, there was a place where she kept her vintage aeroplane. And as she climbed into the front, she put on a special helmet and some goggles. She had a stripy scarf. And Nick put on a smaller helmet and some goggles. And right with him, right on his shoulder, he had tricks. And then they, they started to get going. Agatha turned on the engine and the propeller went. The propeller looks like a ceiling fan. You know a fan on the ceiling? Like that, with blades. As they started to get up into the air, Ricky the dragon flew up and they were flying side by side. They were right underneath the clouds. It was very exciting. Eventually, they spied the farm, and as they flew above the farm and they looked down, they could see a big maze. The maze was in the shape of something. What is that? I wonder, said Ricky the dragon. Nick knew. He looked down and he said, Grandma, Grandma, from the back. It was hard to speak because it was loud. Grandma, that looks like the Canadian flag. That maze looks like the Canadian flag. She was nodding her head in front. She was very busy. She was, she was flying the aeroplane. Nearby at that farm, they had an airstrip, which is a place where you can land the plane. And as she was coming down, she made sure she landed the plane perfectly. It was a little bumpy, but they got down to the bottom and they were very excited. From the air, they had also seen a pond with a little small island in the middle of it. And it looked like there maybe was a puppet show there. There were blankets all around. They also knew that they were going to see lots of animals. And so they were all pretty excited. Once she landed the plane, they headed off to the pond first. There were little tiny rowboats. So they had to get into the rowboat, not Ricky. Ricky just flew over to the little island and he picked a lovely bright blue blanket to sit on that he thought perhaps Agatha and Nick 
and Trex would enjoy. Agatha and Nick were rowing the boat. They took turns. It didn't take long. It just took a few minutes to get to the, to the middle of the pond. And on the pond itself, there were all sorts of different kinds of birds. There were ducks that were swimming around with little, little ducklings. As they got off onto the island and they walked, they sat down on the, the blue blanket. The puppet show began. There was a, it looked like a, a little stage box. And behind it, they saw two puppets come up. And the puppeteer was, was telling a story. They were very excited. The puppets were pretending to fight and were pretending to laugh. Well, they weren't pretending. They really were laughing. They had on these really odd little costumes, the puppets. They were stripy hats and stripy outfits in, in red and white. And they had big red rosy cheeks. And they both had these big pointy noses and eyes that were huge. The story was amazing. Everybody clapped. Yay! They loved the story. After that, they got back in the rowboat. Ricky decided to fly back over across the little pond. And they said, well, where will we go now? Let's go and see some of the animals. As they were walking along, they couldn't believe their eyes. You think that maybe they would just see, I don't know, a donkey. And there were donkeys at this farm. And then Ricky said, what is that? Nick was very knowledgeable. That, he said, is a camel. I know about camels because one time when I was at the zoo, I rode on a camel on one of the, the zoo trips with my mom. Oh, what a beautiful camel. The camel was chewing. And when he was chewing, I wonder what he was eating. Maybe he was eating some straw. I'm not sure what camels eat. We'll have to look that up. They also saw a llama. And the llama was looking over the fence at them. Very carefully, it was staring right at them. He had long, long eyelashes. Ooh, said Nick, I love llamas. Now, as Nick was talking, he was fiddling, touching his tooth. Ricky had a good look at his he said, what, what's happening with your tooth there? It looks wiggly. Nick said, yes, I've got a, I've got a, a wiggly tooth. And, and when it comes out, I'm going, to, I'm going to get something from the tooth fairy. I don't know how much, but I'm really going to be excited when my tooth comes out. His tooth was sort of sticking out. Oh, a little bit like that. They carried on and they saw other animals. Then they saw something quite funny. There were goats that were inside the pen with the camel and the llama. And the camel started to get down on the ground. I guess he was pretty tired. And all of a sudden, one of the goats jumped whoop, right onto the back of the camel. And do you know what happened? The camel didn't even care. He just kept on eating, looking around, not worried at all. They all thought it was pretty funny. Agatha got out of her camera and she quickly took a picture of the goat on the back of the camel's back. They ended up going to another part of the farm. What's going on over here? They saw a big sign and it said, Pie Eating Contest. Oh my gosh! They all loved pies. Well, said Agatha, what do you think? Shall we enter the contest? They all had to pay two dollars, two dollars. And they went into this tent. They sat at a very, very, very long table. Everybody had a pie sitting in front of them. And, and it was difficult because you were not allowed to use your hands. You had to put your face down into the pie and just eat the pie with your mouth. That would be pretty funny, wouldn't it? I bet you they looked funny when they did it. All of a sudden, the contest began. Five, four, three, two, one. Everybody eat your pies. 
They all started eating their pies. Ricky the dragon was eating fast. Agatha was eating as much as she could. Nick had his face in the pie and sitting right next to him on the table was Trix who was watching. As the competition continued, people were laughing at the audience because every time they looked up, they had pie all over their faces. How funny is that? The competition went on. All of a sudden, the judge said, stop, everybody. They looked at all of the pies and they could see that the person or the thing that had eaten the most pie was, can you guess? I wonder if it was Agatha or Nick, or could it have been Ricky the dragon? If you think it was Ricky the dragon, you would be right. He did win the pie eating contest. Yay! They said, well done! On the last thing that they decided to do, the very last thing, as they were having a long day at the farm, they went past a store that had toffee apples. That is an apple that you can you dip in toffee when the toffee is really soft and like syrup and then you put it in the fridge and it gets really hard each one of them had a toffee apple nick bit into the apple so did ricky and so did agatha as they were walking along the apple was on like a, a stick kind of like a straw like a like a wooden stick that they put in the bottom of the apple and they were, they were bright red, they were cherry red, and they were glistening, shiny red toffee apples. As they were walking along, all of a sudden, Nick, Ow! Ow! he said, Grandma, Ricky, look! They looked at him and looked in his mouth. Where's your tooth? said Agatha. It's in the apple, said Nick. She looked at the apple, and sure enough, there was his tooth. He dug it out, put it in his pocket, and kept it there safe, ready. So when he could go home, he would be able to show his mum and dad and put the, put the tooth under his pillow, waiting for the tooth fairy to come. Now they were quite hot. They'd had a wonderful day. It was time to go. Agatha got into her aeroplane, and Nick got into the back of the aeroplane with Trix. They put on all of their gear, the helmets, their goggles. Ricky the dragon started to fly as they got up into the air. The airplane went up and they leveled off and they headed back home. And once they got back to the airfield near Agatha, she landed the airplane beautifully. It wasn't bumpy at all. Nick was in the back clapping. He was very excited. He'd had such a wonderful day and now he had something else to look forward to. He'd lost a tooth and he was going to get some money, he hoped so, from the Tooth Fairy. Off they went, back to Agatha's house. Nick was staying just for a little while longer. He was going to stay for dinner with his grandma. But Ricky had to get home to his mum. So he said, well, I'm, I'm leaving now. So I'm just going to say bye-bye and thank you for a wonderful day, Agatha. And I hope we can do something again soon. And she said, oh, yes, we'll come up with some wonderful ideas on what other adventures that we can have. Well, my friends, that's the end of my story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're all okay. And until next time, when I come back and I have another story out of my head, bye-bye.